Hello everyone, my name is Jose Garcia and in this video I'm going to show you how you can render things in NX 1953. Now keep in mind that this is the newest version of NX, at least on my computer, but this technique should still work on older versions as well. I've used it in older versions, it's still pretty much the same thing. So in order to access the rendering capability here, all you have to do is come over to this render tab up here. If you don't have it, you can right click over here and you can uh, try and add it through this menu here. Once you go into the render tab, go ahead and say studio task. That might take a while and it'll throw you into this, this, you know, this sort of random artistic view, which I'm not really a fan of, but you have a couple of things there. Now, one thing I advise you to do is to turn on this system materials. What that allows you to do, if you look over here, there's a little, a little button here that allows you to assign certain materials. You can also do materials in part. So if you select that down here, there's now a materials in part button, which is very handy. You can also do system scenes, scene preferences, decal stickers. I'll leave that to you to explore. This is just a more basic understanding of the rendering capabilities. Now, in order to assign certain things to this body, all we have to do is go into the system materials, which is located right here. I'm already here. As you can see, we have a couple of things. We have additive manufacturing, etc., etc. Some of these are brand new to NX 1953. The older versions have a little bit less uh, options, I should say. So let's go ahead and take a look at plastics. So we'll go ahead and select the plastics there. And we have a couple of options here. Now, don't worry too much about the color. You can change that later, but they do give you a couple of them. Uh, so they have ABS high gloss black. So in order to assign that, all you have to do is hold down the left mouse button on it and drag it into the part and bam, you can say solid body of Revolve 16. And there's the ABS right there. Let's say that we want to do uh, an ABS matte black, so it's not glossy at all, on the bottom case. So let's go ahead and drag it over there. Solid body of split body like so. And as you can see, there's our assignment of materials. If you want to see what materials are assigned to this solid body in the rendering capability, all you have to do is hit this little button here that says Studio Materials in Part. If you select that, as you can see, this is what we have assigned so far. Uh, the ABS High Gloss Black and the ABS Matte Black. If you right click on it, there is a um, uh, Export Studio Material. So if you've edited this and you are happy with it, uh, you, know, you have a custom color that you selected, you can go ahead and um, export it and then you can import it back to use again and again. Uh, you can say show usage so if you don't know where this thing is assigned as you can see it tells you in this sort of bluish color hey that's where this thing is assigned. If you select material information uh, it tells you what this thing is the RGB color etc etc you know it's, it's a little bit in depth but if this is what you're after then you can go ahead and take a look at this information. You can also say edit all the way down here. So if you say edit, you have a couple of options. You can edit the name if you want. Uh, in the base, you can change the color from here. So if you select this little tile there, it's a little hard to see since I'm using NX in dark mode, but if you select the little tile, you can change the color as you see fit. In this case, I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, you have a lot of options here. You can modify the texture. So if you have a texture from an image that you want to assign to this thing, you can definitely do that. In this case, I'm not going to change any of this. I'm just going to go ahead and say OK. So now that we have this sort of render, all we have to do is hit this little button that says Ray Traced Studio. So we're going to go ahead and select that button there, and you're going to get this little window here. And as you can see, it's using some of the stuff that we assigned. It's using this glossy black uh, finish on the top. But ultimately, that's really not what I want to see. I'm just going to go ahead and hit this pause button in order to pause this whole system. 
okay now the way it comes up in this ray trace studio is dependent on how it looks on your main graphics window so if I orient this like so uh, this is the position that will show up in the ray trace studio so if I hit this play button again you can see that now it looks like so so orient it in the position that you wish and then hit the little play button so let's say that I want to take a look at it from the bottom like so now if I hit this little play button here you can see it orients it in that position you can also edit the brightness over here so let's say that I need more light uh, as I bump up that light to 3 for example you can see that now it looks less dark if you want to edit some of these settings in this Ray Trace Studio you can go ahead and hit this little button that says Ray Trace Studio Editor now I am going to tell you right now that some of these options are very advanced but you have the quality here you can do photorealistic quality interactive or fast interactive you know depending on which one you want one might take longer than the other you have your file safe format which is by default TIFF this is a massive file so if you want to have a smaller file that's still good quality PNG usually works I usually advise people not to use JPEG you know JPEG's not really that great for this uh, resolution is located here so you have a quite a bit of options here that you can mess around with um, if you have a virtual reality headset uh, you can actually display it in VR, which is actually pretty nuts now that they've included that. Um, other than that, though, it's just a couple of standard little things you have here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that. If you want to save the image in this stationary position, uh, all you have to do is hit this little button here that says Start Static Image. Now, once you hit that, the system will begin to render. Um, it's advice that you really not mess with it. It's just going to sit in the background and do its thing. Um, over here in this little section is your quality interactive. Uh, if you drop this down, you have gold, which is photorealistic. You have silver, which is quality interactive. And you have bronze, which is the lowest quality. Um, so I'm going to leave it on quality interactive or the silver metal. And then you can go ahead and say start static image. So I'm going to hit this button here. As you can see, it says static render in progress, number of iterations, et cetera, et cetera. So this number of iterations uh, is something that you can change. Um, if you want to change it, it's found in the settings that I just showed you. Once it hits a certain uh, number of iterations, it will stop and it will ask you, hey, do you want to go forward? And if you do, you just hit the little play button again and it'll keep going and going and going. So as you can see, it says render quality reach, no further image refinement necessary. According to this, this is the uh, silver interactive option. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and say erase static image here. And let's see what it looks like when we turn it over like so. Of course, it, I suspect it's going to struggle more with this glossy finish here. Um, and then let's go ahead and hit the start static image located right here. So as you can see, it is struggling a little bit more. You can definitely hear my laptop in the background. It sounds like a jet engine at this point. But it is giving us uh, some very nice rendering images. As you can see up there, so far it is on iteration number 108. So it's still going and going and going. If you want to pause, you would hit the little pause button. But as a matter of fact, it beat me to it. It says, render quality reach, no further image refinement necessary. Since this is a simple geometry, it obviously can reach these very fast. Uh, but for more complex assemblies, this would obviously take a long time. So once you're happy with the image, all you have to do is hit this Save Image button here. So hit Save Image. Uh, it's going to ask you what you want to export it as. I, by default, use TIFF. If you want to use a transparent background, you would enable this button. So if you're going to include this in a, you know, like a, a photo or something to kind of showcase it, you might want to do that, use transparent image. In this case, I don't really care. I'm just going to go ahead and throw this on my desktop like so. And then I'll say OK. So let's see what it looks like from the desktop if I can find it. Uh, it should be somewhere around here. Let's see, uh, there it is, main button 5 TIFF, and that's what it looks like after it's been rendered. 
I'm going to go ahead and close this Ray Trace Studio out for now. Uh, what I can also do here is I can edit some of the scenes. So I'm going to say Scene Preferences located over here. And as you can see, there's this little, I don't know if you saw it for a minute, but there's a little coordinate system that comes up. So if I bring in the lights by hitting this light section here, you can see that we can alter the direction of the lights. Uh, of course, it's kind of pointing the, the wrong way here, but I can go ahead and kind of modify it. Um, you have a scene right top, a scene left top, a scene top, and that's it. That's all you really get. You can increase the intensity. As you can see, when I increase it, there's a darker shadow. I can do the same thing for the other one. As I increase it, the uh, shadow gets darker. So you can move these coordinate systems around, and depending on where you move them, um, it'll position a light for you. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of what you're up against if you want to render anything in NX. Uh, it's a very basic tutorial, but I feel like with the basics, you should be able to dive in there in the more advanced options and you can figure them out. If you can't, however, please feel free to leave a comment down below and I will happily guide you through them. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.